Colin Montgomery, great to see you in Asia again. Welcome to Golfing Greats in their own words. Thank you, very delighted to be here. We're not too far away from your 50th birthday. As you reflect on your career and where you're going, how do you look at it? It's, it's a funny position that you find yourself in between 45 and 50 is a sort of dull downtime, really. You, uh, you, your careers, or some people's careers have started again at 50. I'm not sure about the seniors tour, to be honest with you. I'm not sure about playing on onward uh, uh, from here. Uh, I think I'll play in the sort of major championships, if you like. I'd love to try and win a major one day. And it, I, think, I think the only chance I've got now is a senior major, so I'll go for that. But it's been, uh, it, it's been some journey I've had. And, and uh, you know, I speak here at 48 and a half years old, and I turned pro at late, 24. I was, I was away at university. Got my degree, which was which was key for me. So I've only been a pro sort of 20, 24 years, which is which is less than m most forty-eight year olds are. And I still enjoy it. I still enjoy the competition much more than I do love the game of golf as such. I love the competition that golf affords me, and uh, uh, I love competing against other players. That's why I've I've always sort of done okay at match play when it's one-on-one, -on -one, more than it has on stroke play, that it's one against 156 other guys. I prefer the match play situation. As you mentioned, you got into the pro ranks a bit later. Why was it so important for you to finish your degree? Most important, I wasn't really due to, I wasn't really due to play uh, professional golf, to be honest. Uh, it came as a, as a roundabout way. I mean, I, mean, I went for a, a job interview with IMG uh, and my job interview was at Turnbury. Uh, uh, a lot of the viewers will have played Turnbury, and a fantastic course it is. And I was asked to join two executives on the back nine of Turnbury. So I'll never forget, I drove my, my mum's car out to the, uh, to the lighthouse at Turnbury, played the back nine in, shot 29, didn't know what it was doing. And they turned to each other and they said, well, I think uh, we should be working for you and you're not working for us. And that changed, that two hours changed my whole life. And uh, therefore I went home, spoke to my parents and said, look, hang on a minute, I think I can do this. I think I can actually give it a go. So I was given sort of two years really to see what happened and, and, uh, and won within that time on the European tour. I won the Portuguese Open in 1989. And I kept going, really, but it wasn't meant to be. I was, I was meant to get a, a normal job, a job with some sort of security. And it panned out differently and I'm so glad it did. A lot of people don't know that even though you're such a proud Scot, you actually did spend quite a lot of your childhood growing up in England. I did indeed in Yorkshire, yes. My father's business moved down uh, when I was about five or six years old. Uh, Foxy's Biscuits was his business and in Yorkshire. And we were 20, 20 happy years in Yorkshire. So from, 20, from five to 25, I was actually based in, based in Yorkshire, in Oakley in West Yorkshire, yeah. yeah. So I've, that's why my accent isn't too Scottish, it's, it's, a bit of, it's, it's a bit of everything. I was in Texas University, I was in Scotland, and of course I was in England, so it's, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag, my accent. What was that experience like, studying and playing golf in Texas in America's South? It was a great experience, uh, the experience of my life, to be honest, and I'd recommend that for anybody. Anybody who has an opportunity of going to that American university system is, uh, to me, do, doing the right thing. I was lucky I had a sort of golf scholarship, so I was fortunate that, that I was sort of paid for, if you like. Uh, I came home at the summers and I came home at Christmas, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I was uh, four years, I studied hard, I got my degree, and also played golf every afternoon. And uh, it was the making of me as, as a person and also as a golfer, and I would fully recommend it to anybody. You've won 31 European Tour titles, but your first came back in 1989. What do you remember about that? First one was the, <laughs> it was amazing. It was, it came fairly easily. Uh, I was four ahead going into the last day and I shot 63 the last day and won by 11. And it's funny, the next 10 events I won were one by one shot. And yet I won the first one by 11. You thought, well, that was just a sort of freak sort of situation where I hold every putt that I looked at and one of these things in one by 11 shots. Um, and I was thinking the game was, the game was okay. And it was, it was pretty easy. And then I went to Valderrama the next week after winning by 11 and, and Julie missed the cut. And it was like, okay, that's okay, golf, you know, the, the golfing gods have said, no, no, no more of this. Come down to earth with a bang. And that's what happened. And uh, 
So you respect this game, there's no question. And just when you think you've got it, uh, it'll come back and bite you. And uh, that's why we all, we're all performing, we're all learning. I, I'm learning all the time now. Uh, every round of golf I play, I learn something else about the, this, this great game, about something about the, the mental side of the game or the, or the technical side of the game or something about other players or what they've, what they've done or what they've had to do with certain shots. I'm always learning something. Every round of golf I'm learning, and it's, a, it's an amazing game that way.